Thank you, sir. So we are ready with Life Surgery 9 uh, by Dave Lee from Singapore. Uh, his patient is a 36-year-old female who is moderately built. She is a homemaker and she complains of right knee pain since the past three years. She gives history of a fall from a motorbike about three years back. And since then, she's complaining of pain on standing, walking, and even climbing stairs, along with uh, night pain, but does not feel any instability. That's her clinical exam video. So there is no uh, fixed flexion deformity. There is no hyperextension. The knee flexes completely up to 135 degrees. So it's a pain-free, complete range of motion. There is no effusion. And the patella glide is normal. And she complains of significant tenderness along the medial joint line, more so on the posterior aspect. That's pinpointing her tenderness. And uh, tests for stability of the cruciates, that's the Blackman test, which is stable, the drawers test, uh, anterior and posterior, stable for ACL and PCL respectively. Uh, the varus and the valgus stress tests are also post, uh, are negative, so she has a stable knee and that's her gait. She walks without any antalgia. That's the long leg film which reveals the Mikulic line passing just medial to the medial tibial spine, so not much of varus there. However, there is a medial meniscus tear uh, which is extending from the posterior to the mid thirds of the medial meniscus. And uh, there is an associated parameniscal cyst, so this looks more like a horizontal uh, meniscus tear along with the parameniscal cyst. That's the sagittal PD fat sat section showing the parameniscal cyst and the horizontal meniscus tear. So we are dealing with a patient who has a horizontal medial meniscus tear along with a parameniscal cyst, and we'll have Dave Lee discuss the plan which is tentatively to perform a right knee medial meniscus repair along with assist decompression and a repair or augmentation of uh, the same. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Dr. Dave Lee from Singapore. I would like to thank uh, EKC for inviting me uh, to, for this course. So today we have a 38-year-old uh, lady. Uh, she complains of uh, medial sided knee pain. Um, and um, on the x-rays, you can see that the joint space on this long leg film is uh, not narrow, medially or laterally. The lateral film is fairly uh, unremarkable and uh, the skyline view looks fairly normal as well. So the abnormality that we can see is uh, firstly um, a parameniscal cyst that's associated with the medial meniscus. This is a degenerate medial meniscus, and we can see from this cut a horizontal meniscal tear. On the coronal section, we do not see uh, the tear extending to the posterior horn. Uh, there's some suggestion of intrameniscal degeneration in the posterior horn. Um, so, so again, from this cut on the axial, we can see the parameniscal cyst, and we can again see the horizontal meniscal tear. Her alignment is neutral, and so, our plan is to do first a cyst decompression. Um, we will approach it from the joint and then decompress the cyst from outside into the joint, um, looking for the horizontal tear, decompressing the cyst, and then subsequently um, then doing a horizontal meniscal repair. Uh, my, my choice would be to use uh, Hebel sutures, perhaps two or three of them, to close down the gap that we see in the horizontal tear. Thank you. Okay, once again, we have a pictorial of the medial meniscus. And so we have, I've drawn the horizontal tear as seen on the coronal cut with the parameniscal cyst. And in this axial cut, you can see the parameniscal cyst drawn. What is to simulate a horizontal tear and two or three Hebel sutures to close down the tear. We will need to probe it to see if it extends further and further stitches need to be placed. And on this coronal cut, you can see how the Hebel sutures look like um, when placed. Thank you. Dr. Lee, Hi. you have now 
log to the auditorium. Okay, should we go backwards to show the when we started? So, so this is uh, this was different from what we expected on the MRI. So, if you could just see the television. Can we go back? Oh, no. Can we go back to the start? The recording. Anand sir, Anand sir. Uh, uh, Bopesh, one second, Dr. Bopesh. Yeah, yeah, he wants. One second, one second, one second, one second. Start, one yeah. Okay, so when we went in, it was a, it was a flat that was from the body of the meniscus all the way to the posterior horn, just almost adjacent to the root. Um, okay, for the time being, we're just going live. We'll just get the sort out of the previous recording. So we are, we are showing the previous recording. Okay. Oh, we're all live. Okay. Okay. So now we are going. No, sir. We have not got the recording. Original recording. Yeah, That's so, it. So this is what we started off with. You can see that it's a flap that Hello starts there. in the Monitor posterior the horn. Come. Can we move forward a bit, just a little? So we are trying to look look at the yes. look at the root. Hello again. Look at the root. Yeah. So the root is there. You can see a large flap, and it's uh, almost like the inferior leaf with a superior leaf that's present. Okay. We forward a bit. Just forward a bit more. Yeah. So so I started. Uh, well, I got an aggressive shaver. So I started by freshening it, and. Uh, I palpated where the opening. So, so when we started, we couldn't feel the cyst externally, but uh, I managed to find a track in that location. And then uh, I think this is me going into the track and then trying to decompress it. I think you can see gradually uh, some some material coming out from the posterior medial junction, just right at where the shaver tip is. And so you can see a large flap. So. I'm just wondering, how many people would repair or would resect that flap? So I had a hard time at that point because I thought it was a horizontal tear, but this was more uh, almost a uh, long flap, uh, the entire, almost the entire posterior horn of the medial meniscus. Yeah, so preparing the, preparing the bed posteriorly, you can see just adjacent there's the root, and so Clearing it, rasping. Okay, can we forward it a bit, please? Okay, and, and this, this was what I had after. So the question was whether I should fix or excise it. So Andy, should I fix it or I remove it? <laughs> I saw what you did. Um, okay. Truth is I would probably take it out, I have okay. to say. Well, I, I, I don't have permission to do that, but um, I, I think that she is for, uh, 40, you know, she's 30 plus, it's a long flap, and um, yeah, so I decided to repair it. And so, can we go forward? Yeah, forward. That's backwards, forward. Forward. So you can see that, her, so I started by using an all inside to just stabilize it. Uh, I was deciding between using a novel stage to try and capture the fragment as well, but I had some difficulty, even though I did a medial release. Can we just move forward a little? So I just started with a simple all inside, stabilized it, and then moved on posteriorly. And then I decided that the, the, the tear that extends into the body, so you can see that's the root, and that's the uh, the degenerate posterior horn. So there's a segmental loss. And, and so we then proceeded on 
to see, and, and, and I, at this point, I decided the best method, as recommended by you, was to use inside-out sutures, because I knew you were moderating. <laughs> so here we, we started with our inside-out sutures. I think that as of now, we have placed four, four sutures, yeah. and uh, well, they are curving, and t I, I don't know if the external picture can show, but they are located in this region. And so we just have to dissect it, and then subsequently. So then, then there was this, like, this flat that was just annoying, and I was trying to then decide to use a Havel fashion to just try and capture it. You know, so yeah, it's very difficult because the posterior end is up mobile, isn't it? Yeah. With a bucket handle, you've got stability at each end. Yeah. So but the reason I prefer uh, in to out sutures, we just published in the American Journal of Sports Medicine, is that the forward, forward. Fa failure rate of all inside forward. devices for uh, bucket handle medial meniscus uh, is double if you use all inside. So if you use uh, inside to out, it's a lot cheaper. There's so much less damage to the meniscus because the devices are very thin and uh, the success is much higher. Yeah, so, for, okay, can we just go now? Can we stop and go live? Yes, sir, we're going live. Yeah, so... Okay, so intra-articular view, you can see. So we have four sutures, and then the posterior one is an all-inside suture. So I, I guess the next would be, uh, would anybody put any more sutures, or we'll just proceed on to go externally to tie it? Have you done any inferior surface ones, just superior? Okay. Can we just have uh, the so inside? Usually I would do sort of three on the top and one underneath and that's a ratio. Can I have the cannula again? No, no, sorry, the, uh, yeah. This one. Yeah, this one. I will, I will need this. Okay, so so the, the success rate of meniscal repair the lateral meniscus uh, heals extremely well. It's got a very good blood supply, an artery all the way round. When Dinshaw was clearing that cyst, exactly how I do it, you often encounter the lateral inferior geniculate artery, and it, you need to find it, need to coagulate it. On the medial side, the blood supply is less good, and hence the failure rate is much higher okay. of meniscus repair. Even when you do a great job, even in kids, the failure rate is about 40 to 50 percent, so really high Can failure. Can open another one? Um, but the consequences of losing medial meniscus are much less. So on the lateral side, even horrendous tears, segmental tears are repair because by happy okay, coincidence, uh, they do heal, even though resecting them has a, a high arthritic problem. So that's the right relationship, whereas medially, um, the failure rate of repair is high but the consequences, thankfully, are much less. So my professional athletes, almost all adult athletes, I'll remove a bucket handle medial meniscus uh, because predictably they'll be back to play at four to six weeks and they don't get problems until after their career. Now, I have to talk to them and explain the consequences, but I, I've seen too many failures of meniscal repair that I've done, and I believed I've done them perfectly and they failed, whereas laterally, I want the player to agree to repair because even a small resection of lateral meniscus is a disaster. I published a big series of 100 cases so of medial lateral meniscectomy and 70% of my lateral meniscectomies in pro football have recurrent effusions, a rescope rate of about one in five. And then it's the most common reason that I retire players who get osteoarthritis secondary to the partial lateral meniscectomy. Even a small resection, within a year or two, you'll get chondral damage. Whereas medially, they'll be back playing, they'll be happy. So I think with my less athletic population, I will try a repair for a bucket handle, particularly if it's a younger patient, but the failure rate is significant on the medial side. Just a moment. I'll change it. You take it up. Okay, so we have placed the first um, suture, as recommended, inferior suture, and we're going to place a second one, and then I think we'll go and tie. Cool. So it's, it's almost a lost art in out suturing. It's amazing, really, how we've embraced all inside devices at huge cost. 
and as I said, with inferior results. So uh, I think particularly if you operate on athletes, you'll find out if an operation works or not because they really test it. Whereas I suspect with all inside devices, there are a lot of unhealed repairs, but we just don't notice because the patients don't do enough to cause symptoms. And we all think we've done a great job, which I guess we have, but we don't realize we failed. So I'm just choosing the best cannula to just put the, yeah. the fever because I cannot see it. Yeah. And, and so... So one of the great things with the in, into-out suturing, as Dave showing us, is you can choose a curvature of cannula to reach the desired portion of meniscus. And you know, people talk about out-to-in suturing for the anterior third of the meniscus, but if you bend the cannula, you can use a, an into-out, I think, for the whole uh, way around the meniscus. And I nowadays almost only use into-out sutures, even right by the roots of both menisci. Now, on the lateral side, that you have to know what you're doing because of the uh, neurovascular bundle that's very close by, and you've got to put a needle catcher across the capsule. But medially, you're safe. I don't put a needle catcher in, but I do dissect right across between medial gastroc and the capsule, and I do open the uh, semimembranosus bursa because often your sutures go into the bursa and you need to pull them out. Yeah, so we have passed all the sutures inferiorly and superiorly. And so the next step will be to tie. And I think uh, we have also captured the inferior leaf that was flipping nice. up. Nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, so this is what we have. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to go outside to show the tying, but I, I, I think that's all from my side. Uh, the next thing I will do, because this is an isolated uh, meniscus repair, will be to do a notch microfracture. You know, and of course, the, just now the discussion on whether or not you will use biologics to... Dr. Dr. Andy, Dr. Bupesh here. Uh, fantastic, uh, given the difficult case, uh, wonderful uh, configuration of knots and the meniscus looks very stable. Uh, for the benefit of everybody, yeah. we understand you have done a pie crusting of the MCL too. Yes. Yeah. And then what was interesting is I could see that the knee was not on anybody's hand. Your assistant was not holding the leg and you could still kind of get a good position to look into the medial compartment. Can you throw some tricks on how you were keeping the limb oh. when you were uh, looking at the medial uh, meniscus? Because it yeah, looked so like your thing was on the Mayo trolley or something like that. Yeah, so, so essentially we use a leg holder. Okay. Uh, I, I have a standing stool. I don't know if you can see it. And I actually just put the uh, leg on my hip. On your hip. And then I actually just do a valgus. Okay. And of course, I mean, this is what we get. We did a limited pie crust. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, but so this is the, the view that we get. Fantastic. Of course, initially, we, when we, are, we were doing it before we went live, you know, uh, I got some assistance, you know, with holding the leg from the team here, you know, because it, it's just not possible to just do the entire surgery just on this yeah. because it, at some parts you need you will need uh, a bit more assistance yeah, that's very really nice yeah i yeah. definitely agree with that i once made the big mistake on a sunday of operating on an english international rugby player and i didn't want to trouble my fellow i was very kind i didn't want to w take him out on a day off and this guy is 135 kilograms although he plays for england he's originally from samoa and my god i need an assistant i didn't have one so life was somewhat difficult so, like most things, get help and plan properly. And I regret not having had an assistant for that. Yeah, so the other thing is that um, for, for the body, then you have just, you just need a little less opening and you can see. Yeah. And so just one, one other point is that the, the meniscus was injured for a while. So the carriage here is quite crummy. And so we have like a grade one chondral lesion throughout uh, the medial condom. Yeah. As you can see that. I mean, in truth, when you get a degenerate meniscus like this, it's the beginning of degeneration of the whole joint, medial joint. It's the beginning of the end, really. So uh, you're up against it, no question. So one of the things uh, I see Dave just passed the sutures. I always make my incision to collect the sutures before I pass them. Um, the problem is if you've got a series of sutures coming through the skin, when you make your incision, it's very easy to cut through the sutures yep. and then you want to cry. Um, <laughs> But the problem is, it does mean I make a, perhaps a bigger incision that I need, than I need to. Uh, so there's pros and cons to that. 
Okay. So I, I think that's all for me here. I'll, okay. I'll yes, end cool. off with tying yeah, messages. We'll, we'll, we'll perhaps have a chat. Um, but thanks very much, Dave. Okay. Not the easiest case. Very difficult, I think. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you.